Electric cars are advancing so rapidly that driving an internal combustion engine car may soon be like using a phone box. But how does this technology work? Allow the Vox Network to explain. Electric cars are as old as cars themselves, with the first electric car being developed by William Morrison in the USA way back in 1891. While things have moved on a bit, the electric car still consists of three main items, a motor, inverter and battery. Let's start with the induction motor, which drives the wheels of your car. The first induction motor was invented by Nikolai Tesla in 1887 and consists of two main items. The rotor, typically a cylinder made up of a series of conduction bars short-circuited by N-rings, and the stator, which is given a three-phase AC or alternating current pulse. It's this current in the coils that produces what is known as a four-pole rotating magnetic field, or RMF. Controlling both the AC power frequency and the pulse amplitude is the inverter, which is basically the brains of an electric car. When you hit the accelerator pedal, the inverter is actually increasing AC current to the motor. The inverter also plays a crucial role in regenerative braking. As soon as you come off the accelerator in an electric car, the same induction motor now acts as a generator by ensuring the rotor speed is greater than the RMF speed. An opposing electromagnetic force acts on the rotor during this process, causing the driven wheels to slow down, while any generated electricity can be stored in the battery pack. The battery pack is where the motor gets all its juice from. You may not be able to store electricity, but you can store electrical energy in the chemicals inside a battery. Most batteries look like those little tubes that power your TV's remote control, but in the case of a car battery, they're tightly packaged together into a series of modules or cells. Using lots of small cells instead of a few big cells allows the car to cool its batteries more effectively, which improves the lifespan of the battery pack. You can wire cells together in parallel or in series to increase either voltage or amperage, or both. You can think of voltage as stored charge, or just imagine your bathtub full of water. If you started to let water out of the plug hole, you could measure that rate of flow. In a battery, this flow or current is measured in amps. If you were to fill the bath with more water, the flow rate out the plug hole would still be limited. So a greater voltage can be limited by the amperage. When a battery charges, ions of lithium typically move through an electrolyte soup from the positive electrode made of lithium cobalt oxide and attaches to the negative electrode made of carbon. During this discharge, the lithium ions move back from the carbon to the lithium cobalt oxide. It's a process that is stable and efficient enough to repeat again and again, just like charging your mobile phone. But before the battery can supply any energy, the car's brain or inverter needs to convert DC or direct current to AC, alternating current, in order for it to feed the induction motor. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ask us any questions about electric vehicles, and we'll try to explain them in the next episode of I Speak Electric.